Have you ever heard the phrase, if you had a brain, you'd be dangerous? Well, as it turns out, you don't actually need a brain to be dangerous. I mean, a knife can be pretty dangerous, but it's not going to be any help to you in a table quiz. Well, maybe it could, but anyway, the point I'm trying to make is that stupid people can pose just as much a threat to you as non-stupid people. Actually, maybe more so. There's not just the fact that they're liable to do something idiotic, like use a blowtorch to kill a fly sitting on a propane tank. But it's really just their whole view of the world. If logic and reason aren't friends to you, then most of your decision making is going to be driven by emotion, which means the consideration for the consequences of your actions isn't even a factor, you just act. There's a lot of people out there that operate purely on how they're feeling at that given moment. No further analysis of the situation, no comparison to past events or pattern recognition to determine how the situation may unfold, no consideration for how their actions might impact things at a broader level. The past and future are beyond their grasp. They just live entirely in the present moment. That's how a lot of people end up in jail. Like some of the idiots in today's story who got in trouble over a website called Rent a Hit man.com which sounds like something that might appear as a gag in one of my drawings but is in fact a real website with a story that would be unbelievable if it weren't for the well-documented existence of stupid people. In 1999, California man Bob Innes graduated from Napa Valley Police Academy with hopes of joining law enforcement. He then applied for several agencies but had no luck. At the time, California had budget cuts and hiring freezes and it soon became clear to Innes that the positions in this field had dried up. He instead decided to enter an industry that he thought would always have positions. IT, and he enrolled in a program with an emphasis on computer security. While here, Innes and some other students came up with a business idea. They'd form a company that would offer security testing. So if you had a website, you could hire these guys to basically try and hack it. And they would then inform you of your website's vulnerabilities and how you would fix these vulnerabilities and make it more secure. This is a pretty big industry in IT, and there are a lot of companies that offer these services. When it came to a name for their business, the group decided on Rent a Hitman. And in 2005, it has bought the rentahitman.com domain for $9.20. The business never came to fruition though, as after graduation, some of the guys got jobs and left the state, leaving Innes holding the domain. He eventually decided to just sell the domain name and hopefully make a profit off it, but as it turned out, no one was really interested in buying rentahitman.com, so he decided he'd hold on to it and just put a contact email on the website so if anyone was interested in buying it, they could reach out to him. Then he just sort of forgot about it. Several years later, Innes checked his inbox to see if anyone was interested in buying the site. He was shocked to discover he had accumulated about 300 emails. The vast majority were jokes, people asking if they could rent a hitman to eliminate their friends, things like that. But one email from a woman called Helen stood out from the rest. In a long rambling message, Helen explained that she was from the UK but was now stranded in Canada after having been screwed out of her father's inheritance by other family members back in the UK. She wanted these three family members killed and unlike the other emails, Helen included names, descriptions and addresses. That's a bit odd, Innes thought. This Helen person obviously needs some serious help. He ignored her email until he saw she sent another one, this time with urgent in the subject and even more detailed information. This prompted Innes to respond. Do you still require our services? Helen responded, yes. This troubled Innes and he printed out all the information Helen had given him and took it to a friend who was a sergeant in the local police department. They contacted the Canadian police who tracked down Helen. She spent four months in prison for soliciting murder before being extradited back to the UK where she was wanted on other serious charges. It was the first conviction secured through rentahitman.com but it wouldn't be the last. Bob Innes then decided to overhaul the website. Instead of just a single page with a contact email, he created a full website claiming to offer contract killing services. Although it's obvious the website is a joke. It features fake reviews left by satisfied customers. It offers discounts for seniors and claims it's 100% compliant with HIPAA, the Hitman Information Privacy and Protection Act of 1964, which is obviously not a real thing. And I'm assuming is a subtle reference to the assassination of JF in late 1963. The joke website receives many joke emails but also some serious ones like Helen's. 
And let's talk about how stupid you would have to be to try to solicit a murder on a website called rentahitman.com. Firstly, if you're planning on having someone killed, it's generally considered a bad look to have things like Hitman for Hire in your search history. That's like those idiots who kill someone and then Google how to dispose of body or how to clean blood with no trace. If you're doing some shady stuff, don't tell Google about it, dumbass. Then there's the fact that the website is called rentahitman.com and is full of obvious jokes. How could someone think this is real? Because they're stupid. You ever get an email from a scammer and it's riddled with spelling mistakes and other clear indications that this is not the genuine article. You might think these are the worst scammers ever. It's so obvious it's a scam. But in reality, the scammers are actually being quite smart. They're just filtering out the intelligent people. I mean, you could fool them with a really professional looking email, but they're gonna figure out it's a scam when Microsoft starts asking them to wire transfer a load of money to Nigeria. So you're only wasting your time trying to lead them down that path. You only want the stupid people who actually think they can pay a multinational corporation in redeemable gift cards. So you send a stupid email. Over the years, Bob Innes caught a bunch of stupid people who thought rentahitman.com was a genuine website and sent their information to police, resulting in dozens of arrests. For example, in 2022, 53-year-old Michigan woman Wendy Wine pled guilty to trying to solicit a hitman through the website to kill her ex-husband. She was sentenced to 7 to 20 years in prison. In 2024, 33-year-old Leif Everett Heyman of New Mexico pled guilty to using the site to try to have his girlfriend's mother killed, describing her as controlling. At time of writing, 31-year-old Deanne Parkin was sentenced to 90 months in prison just two days ago. She had contacted the website to try and have a woman killed because she wanted her, in her own words, kept away from my husband and family. I think I've heard a similar thing in a Dolly Parton song. Jolene. Jolene, 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 I'm begging of you, please don't make me go on a parody website and I probably thought I'd attempt to have you killed because I think you have your eyes on my man. Now, Bob Innes didn't originally set the website up in an attempt to catch stupid criminals, but after Helen's arrest, he realized he had perhaps saved the lives of three people. He continues to fund and maintain the website for that reason. Every file he sends to the police represents a person who, if they didn't contact Rinta hitman.com may have found a legitimate service or just gone on to commit the murder themselves. He gives each request that he deems to be serious a 24 hour cooling off period for them to change their mind, after which he responds asking if they still require his services or if they'd like a free consultation with a field agent. If they respond yes, he forwards their information to the police, who are the field agents who offer free consultations. He reckons he saved about 150 lives through rent to hitman.com but not all the inquiries are people looking to have someone else killed. After receiving numerous requests from people who wanted to get into the Hitman business themselves, Innes added a career section to the website where people can apply for a job in the contract killing industry. In 2023, one such applicant, 21-year-old Tennessee man and Air National Guardsman, Josiah Garcia, was charged with the use of interstate facilities in the commission of murder for hire. In his application to rentahitman.com, he wrote, I'm looking for a job that pays well related to my military experience, shooting and killing the marked target, so I can support my kid on the way. <laughs> Jesus, what can I say? I enjoy doing what I do, so if I can find a job that is similar to it, such as this one, put me in, coach. That just sounds like a joke, but after Innes forwarded his information to the police, Garcia was contacted by an undercover FBI agent posing as someone who was in need of a hitman. After agreeing on $5,000, Garcia accepted a down payment of half the amount and asked the agent if he needed a photo of the dead body once the deed was done. He was subsequently arrested. It's not all fun and games in the world of contract killing though. Along with all the stupidity, Bob Innes does come across some cases that are genuinely quite sad sad or messed up. In 2023, 18 year old Jasmine Paez of Miami was arrested after using rentahitman.com to try to have her three year old son killed. Providing photos and an address, she claimed her child was getting in the way of continuing a relationship with an ex-boyfriend who was also charged with conspiracy to commit murder. 
Other cases involve minors trying to have their parents killed, and when police investigate, they discover that the child is being abused. Other people try to take out contracts on themselves, so that their loved ones don't think they took their own lives. This is just really sad stuff. And I would imagine it probably has an impact on Bob Innes, who still maintains renttohitman.com to this day. You can visit this website right now. Whatever effect it might have on him, he remains dedicated to what he sees as saving lives, even though his involvement in this was really an accident. So there you have it. What should just be a funny website actually has quite an insane backstory. If you enjoyed hearing this story, you might also enjoy a video I did a while ago about a hitman who delegated the task to another hitman, inadvertently creating a string of hitmen that resulted in the job going catastrophically awry. I have a bunch of other videos that you can watch at your own leisure, or you could subscribe to see a new one every week. Well, until next time, stay safe. Again, pled guilty to attempting to use his website to hire a hitman to kill her husband. This despite multiple indications the website's a sham. There's several red flags on the website. There's a banner ad. It opens up a new browser window for the Internet Crime Complaint Center that's run by the FBI. It's like a lot of these people aren't very bright. No. <laughs>